All right. Well, welcome to, gosh, what episode number is this? Seven? We, we seven. keep forgetting. Okay, good. We keep losing track of how many episodes this has been, and we're not even that far into the show yet. So imagine if this actually persists for a while. Um, anyway, welcome to episode seven of Man, Buns, and Jesus. Uh, this is Pastor Ben Olschlager from uh, Lake Orion, Michigan. Not rocking a man bun today. Didn't feel like doing my hair. That is Pastor uh, Josh Laborious out in Eastvale, California. <clears throat> For some reason, my brain wanted to call it something else. It's fine. <clears throat> I know where you live. <laughs> kind of. Well, when you say it like that, it sounds like a threat. <laughs> uh, in the best possible way, I know where you live. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, it's good to have you back with us this week. Josh, what are we talking about today? Well, uh, today, seen as uh, it's, it's about a week and a half till Christmas, we are going to talk about um, just some ways to celebrate the holiday. And um, before you stop listening to us, we're not about to just tell you all of these things that you love about Christmas are bad and you should like... We're not those guys, okay? Um, but we're going to talk about, like, what are some ways that we can kind of keep Christmas in, a, in an appropriate focus and a faithful focus as we celebrate um, in all the various ways. So that's the topic we're going to be tackling today. Hopefully it's a little more heart, lighthearted than last week. Um, I say hopefully. It better be. Otherwise, we're yeah. doing something <laughs> wrong. So... I, I'm picturing one way that this could totally go wrong and like it's not lighthearted. And that's if we like dive into the real story of St. Nick. <laughs> let's not, let's not do that. That doesn't sound like fun. <laughs> uh, it's not that bad. He just punches a heretic. It's fine. You know? <clears throat> um, so is that how you celebrate Christmas, Ben? You punch heretics? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, uh, it's my favorite tradition. <laughs> uh, there's gonna be at least one episode of this podcast where it's just us like uncontrollably laughing for half an hour um with like that intermittent would be comments an insanely boring podcast <laughs> you're absolutely right but it'd be fun for us to record that's true um, that's, which is like at least 60 percent of the reason we do these anyway, <laughs> is for our own absolutely. entertainment so absolutely Makes at least one day of the week a little bit more fun. Um, so, Josh, why are we talking about uh, some things that we can do for Christmas? Like, um, oh, Christmas has, like, so many set traditions, so many of these, like, beautiful things that we do. It's, it's a time where we gather with family. It's a time where um, many of us really, really set aside the um, priority to, to go to church especially on Christmas Eve. Some people double dip, do Christmas Day too, if that service is available. Yeah. Uh, this year's a little funky with Christmas Day falling on Saturday between Christmas Eve and, and a normal Sunday, so. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, anyway, what, yeah, what, why are we talking about this, Josh? So I think the reason we're talking about this is because it's a legitimate question, right? Mm -hmm. um, in that, Christmas traditions, I think, have evolved and grown almost to be a thing of their own. And in a lot of cases, kind of almost totally separated from, from the actual holiday itself. Um, and I think we, like, we can point to a lot of things that might be the cause of that. The reality is we can't really say authoritatively, this is why it's gone this way i mean part of it i'm sure is because a lot of these traditions are pretty fun so people who don't celebrate christmas uh secular uh individuals people of other faiths are like that looks like fun i want in on that and they do it because they're fun without actually engaging with um the reason for the celebration in the first place i think another thing is that a lot of the celebrations are not, at least on the face, related to Christmas at all. 
like I'm looking out my window right now on our balcony, which our apartment complex, and I was thinking about this the other day, they didn't pay someone to decorate the complex for Christmas. And I think they're saving, well, obviously that would have them saving money and how they're doing it instead is they have put out a prize for the first, second and third best decorated balconies in the complex of $300 off rent, $200 off rent and $100 off rent. And I was thinking the other day, I'm like, I bet that is a lot cheaper than it costs to have someone come out and string up the trees and stuff in the complex. And you can say, oh, we're decorating because everyone has their balconies decked out. Anyway, so I'm looking at my balcony and I have Christmas lights and I have garland and we have a tree um, and we have string lights that are smart lights. So they're currently programmed in Christmas colors, but that will not be the case all the time. And I'm thinking, what does any of that have to do remotely with Jesus being born? Like, what? The pine tree is not native to Israel, guys. Fun fact. Uh, I, I mean, I guess you could say lights. We, we have stars make an appearance in the Christmas story, but like that's that's kind of weak. So I think it's worth talking about. Like we do all these celebrations and how, how can, because I do believe they can't, how can they serve our celebration of Christmas itself, the actual uh, festival, the church festival recognition of Jesus' birth. And I'm careful to phrase it that way because I know so many people are like, Jesus was born in July. And I'm like, fine. I like, I don't, I genuinely don't think it matters what time of year he was born. We have decided this is when the entire world of Christianity is going to celebrate the fact that he was born. The Orthodox celebrated at a different time. Well, almost the entire world. No, that's like maybe half. Oh, come on. With Protestants and the Catholic Church, that's got to give you at least 60%. Okay, that's fair. It's, okay, maybe more like two-thirds. We'll, we'll Google it. I'll Google it now. You can keep, keep you'll, going. You'll Google the, what is the percentage of global Christianity that is, is of the Orthodox tradition? Um. Fun fact, we also number the commandments differently, which has thrown me off ever since. Basically, every denomination numbers them differently. Uh, Oh, This is why I can never keep the numbers straight. Anyway. Okay. um, So, as we're going forward, I I think one thing that... I was way overshooting my population. Sorry. It was only like 12% of world Christians. Well, see, I would have thought it was higher than that, too, because, like... I would assume that the vast majority of like Russians, if they're practicing Christians, are Russian Orthodox. That would be my assumption. And my other assumption would be that Russians make up a large percentage of it. Anyway, <laughs> we're going down a lot of tangents here. Yeah. One thing I do want to kind of throw out there right at the beginning, and then we'll talk about like the other celebrations. But this is kind of like a this is a pet peeve I inherited from my uh, f- from some of my family members in that they, they were at a church that didn't do worship on Christmas day. And there was no reason for that. Like we don't do worship on Christmas, Christmas day, but that part, a big part of that is because we rent from a pub, from a public school. We, we rent our space from a public school and getting someone there to like, officially unlock it and open it for us and and because they have to have a janitor on staff the whole time on christmas day is a pretty big no-go um i shouldn't say that it's a big obstacle plus it would cost us a ton extra so but they went to this church that there they had their own building there like there was no good reason they weren't worshiping on on christmas day every single year like this year yeah you can say well that's three days in a row by the time you get to Sunday, you're going to get three people showing up. And the reason was that the, the pastor, it was, time, it was his time for family because Christmas is a family holiday. And I've heard that before from people like, we don't go to church on Christmas Day because it's a family holiday. And this is something like, this is one of the things that is a pet peeve of my family member 
that I've kind of inherited a little bit because it's not, at its core, Christmas is not a family holiday. It's a great time to get together with family, but at its core, Christmas is a church holiday. It is a, it is a Christian holiday. It is a faith holiday, right? So in your celebrations, whatever form they take, whatever you do to celebrate, church should be high on the priority list, if not the number one thing on the priority list, right? Because that's what we're celebrating. We're celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. That's a church thing. So if you're listening to this podcast and you're like, oh, I'm not sure if I'm going to church this this Christmas, like, go, <laughs> do it. So that's my that's my shtick. I consider that enough. I'm not going to go on about that anymore. Well, uh, you can be the fun guy now, the fun uncle. Yeah. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll finish your therapy session later. Um, <laughs> no, you don't have time for that. You're right, I don't. Um, I have to get my booster this afternoon. Um, anyway, um, yeah, thanks. Um, before I jump into my my tangent here, uh, cedars are coniferous, so they do have pine trees in Israel. No way. I mean, I believe you. I believe that you looked it up. I saw you typing on your computer. <laughs> Shows you what I know about Israel. Jeez. <laughs> anyway, there's not a lot of them left. They've been mostly forested out, but uh, they do exist. Anyway, um, I, I think part of me wants to like take what you were talking about and and like this whole thing being a um like christian christmas is obviously a church holiday it's it's a high feast day celebrating the birth of, of our lord and savior jesus christ um uh, you don't get much more high feast day than that um it's christmas and easter those are days you 100 percent should be in church yeah absolutely absolutely um and if those are the only two days you're in church let's have a conversation um but I think there's elements of, of the, the Christmas story that lend themselves really well to a lot of the, the traditions that have popped up around Christmas. Like saying that uh, Christmas um, isn't a family holiday, I think is also kind of untrue. Because if we look at the, the story of Christmas itself, one of the central components to the story is the miraculous way that God brought this family together, that he brought together Mary, uh, a virgin, and, and gave her a child that, she, that he then directed Joseph to remain faithful to this woman who became pregnant out of wedlock by miraculous means, obviously, but, you know, it was still so incredibly taboo for, for Joseph to remain in that relationship. Um, there, there's a miracle to the way that God brought that family together and being able to come together as a family to celebrate that, I think is huge. And so I think a lot of what we need to do, you're right, that we need to fo focus this back on the church, but we need to just take these traditions and actually remember where they came from. Um, remember why they started and, and you know, what sort of, of uh, elements of the Christmas story story we're upholding through these traditions. Because, like, getting together as a family, it's a great thing. It's a great oh, opportunity yeah. to live out vocation. It's a and great maybe opportunity. maybe the, the better way to phrase it, uh, I misspoke when I said it's not a family holiday. It's not first and foremost a family holiday. Absolutely. Like, don't get me wrong. Uh, I love yeah, getting no, together I was, with family. <laughs> I think you even said it's a good thing to get together with family. Uh, just noting that it's a church holiday for it. Like, I don't think you necessarily misspoke, but uh, Whew, I, I think it's, relief. yeah. <laughs> I think it's just like, we don't necessarily, my, my, my point here is we don't need to separate the traditions that have started to become perhaps overly secularized from the church part of Christmas because they started as one let's just talk about how to make them one right like use that family time 
to talk about how miraculous it was that God gave this amazing, or that God brought together this incredibly miraculous family, including a, a child born of the Holy Spirit. Um, or uh, bring your family to church. Church. Exactly. You can bring your family to church. You can talk about the story when you get home. Um, my my family, uh, we like to get together around the piano and sing Christmas songs, uh, but like Christmas hymns, not necessarily uh, the, you know. Not Mariah Carey. I have to hear Jingle Bells. Yeah, well, yeah, not uh, All I Want for Christmas is You. Um, it's a fun piece to listen to, but not necessarily good to help communicate the Christmas story. Um, why did I just call it a piece? That's showing my music nerd side here. You, anyway. are, you are a music, music nerd. Also, oh, yeah. side note to 100%. the management of my apartment community. Also, not an appropriate song to play in the gym. <laughs> Jeez. If you, want, if you want gym music that's Christmas, just like loop uh either pop go or punk goes christmas or uh the trans-siberian orchestra uh like christmas albums or uh, no hot take christmas music is not workout music uh crap who did it one of the metal bands i listened to put out a christmas album and i think you'd work out to it josh You've never heard Okamo Come Emanuel screamed at you. Before. You're correct. It's, I have not. It's also it is, not on my to-do list. If if any of my my metalhead friends or Josh's metalhead friends are listening to this and you know what album we're talking about, drop it in the comments. I don't know how uh, many metalhead what, friends I have. <laughs> I've I've got a handful. I, if uh, if my buddy Chris listens to this, he'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Anyway. It's been a while since I've listened to the album, but now I want to. So that's going to be what happens after this. Anyway, <clears throat> all of that, all of that is to say, like, let's just, as as big part of Christmas, let's take the the traditions that we already know and love, and redirect them back towards the the things that that began them, family, Christ, uh, Christ family. Uh, the provision of God in the midst of um, their great hour of need, uh, the, the gifts of the wise men, which were given to God, not to, you know, necessarily our kids that may or may not need them. Um, and yeah. So let's, uh, let's go through a couple of these uh, traditions at least the ones Ooh, we can. Can one of them be cookies? One of them can be cookies, and talk about kind of where where they intersect with the Christmas story, and then also how we can <laughs> use them to point, like how, how they can point us back mm -hmm. uh, to Christ, back to our, our salvation. Um, where are the gospel handles and Christmas stuff? <laughs> That's a joke go. for for the seminarians that may or may not listen to this. Uh, we'll talk about gospel handles sometime because I actually I am not a fan of that idea. Anyway, um, so is our, our what's our first what's our first tradition here that we want to hit? Let's let's hit a nice low hanging fruit: um, a gift giving. Okay, we we give gifts to loved ones, which. Side note, and if, if you listen to this and you know me, or even if you don't know me, and you know, like, what is the limitation of gift giving? Like, how closely affiliated do you have to be with someone where it is, like, societally expected or appropriate to get them a gift? Like, I get gifts from my brothers. Do I get, get another, none of my brothers have girlfriends, but, like, would I get a gift for their girlfriends? Or, like, I get gifts from my I don't get gifts from my aunts and uncles, but if I like, do I do it aunts and uncles? Do I do cousins? So I, I need personal clarity on that. So if you are an expert in the field, please let me know. 
because I'm I need to know. Um, I I would say Josh, just from personal experience, it's an entirely like family related decision. My yeah, my family does it as an exchange, like where we draw names and you have to get gifts for someone. <clears throat> so it could be you're gonna get 50 answers if we drop that question in the comments. Well, you know? let's let's <laughs> we'll get 50 answers and then I'll put a poll out with my favorite three. <laughs> well, there you go. Anyway, so the connection to the story I think Ben alluded to earlier. And I'm taking this because it's easy and I don't have to think too hard, is the wise men, right? The wise men brought gifts to Jesus. I, I think that's a really easy, like, I don't know for a fact that's where it came from, but um, that's a pretty cool tradition. And there's a theory out there that those gifts are actually what enabled Joseph and Mary to escape to Egypt when Herod came in and was killing all the kids. So yeah so like that's that's kind of uh an intersection i see with the christmas story so josh are you telling me that we should get all of our loved ones and relatives uh an embalming fluid gold and a perfume um i, I think no incense sorry incense per uh embalming fluid and gold um yeah because okay. it uh Great. it reminds us that that uh, it points us to Jesus' death and then his uh, his resurrection as king and his, I guess, in a sense, his place as our intercessor before God. Uh, is that, Beautiful. Is that Beautiful. what you wanted from me, Ben? <laughs> An analysis uh, of the symbolic meaning of the gifts? Uh, nope, not even remotely. <laughs> Uh, Wait, are you are you implying that I shouldn't have gotten embalming fluid for my brothers? <laughs> Was that a bad gift? Do I need to go back to Kohl's and return it? I mean, you don't have to return it. As long as you, you have a really healthy understanding of, or they have a really healthy understanding of their own mortality, then, then it's probably okay. Then it'll be fine. And especially it because of the fact that I'm suggesting I got embalming fluid for the holes. <laughs> Where else would you get it? It's definitely not at Toys R Us. No, I that got a friend who owns a funeral anymore. home. I just oh, okay. call him. I don't know if you can ship embalming fluid, though. Um, that might be a control aldehyde. Stuff, actually. Yeah, it's mostly formaldehyde. I don't know about that. Um, Anyway, <laughs> oh gosh, the people who are listening to this episode of the podcast are probably like, so. These guys uh, are idiots. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you'll recall, if you haven't heard it already, we put out a trailer for the show and we may remind you that you may think this isn't how a podcast is supposed to go. You're supposed to be more focused on, on, on topic. To quote our trailer and Cheryl from Archer, you're not my supervisor. <laughs> Do what <Bingo>. you want. <laughs> um, so how can gift giving today point us to uh, the gospel? Ben, I mean. Well, <laughs> I think, I mean, there's a couple of things that we can do um, along with that. And I think a big one, um, I like getting little notes with gifts, um, oftentimes explaining how or why a gift was chosen. Um, and, you know, sometimes it, like in, in a way it is kind of a blessing. Um, here's a random example. Uh, my cousin drew, drew me in our exchange, exchange probably five, six, seven years ago. Um, I asked for Tupperware because I was at that point, uh, making my own meals in college and in need of ways to store said food. Um, and so he, you know, got this really well thought out series of sizes of Tupperware so that I could feed myself, you know, like, and, and make large meals over the weekend and have lunches and dinners for the rest of the week. Um, and it was great. Like, 
it was an incredibly well thought out, meaningful gift that was practical. It was useful. Um, and it like, it blessed me. And he, he explained his thought process in, in a little note to me in the gift. Um, it was also kind of funny because I was a 20 or 21 year old guy asking for Tupperware for Christmas. Um, so I did get a fair amount of flack from not flack, ribbing from, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ribbing from my, uh, from my family on that one. But like in, in a lot, in a big way, that was just, that was a blessing to me to be able to receive that gift. And, um, I think that kind of points back to the thing that you noted about, like, there's some speculation that the gifts Christ received from the wise men were how they were able to avoid the, the slaughter of the infants. And that was a blessing to Jesus and his family in, in that moment. And so I think if we're giving these gifts as, a, as an opportunity to bless uh, our, our loved ones, I think that's a great way to start by just kind of turning that, that uh, tradition back around a little bit. And then also, you know, you can include a little prayer or a little, um, I'm praying for you. God loves you in, in your note. Uh, and I think yeah. that goes a long way too. Well, and I think just having, having something to remind you that kind of that's mm -hmm. the connection. Mm -hmm. So looking at gifts as an opportunity to bless others. And that like, I don't know what it, what it, what a reminder looks like for you listening to this. Like for me to remind myself of something, I, I tend towards symbols, right? I love, uh, I love to pull something out. And, and every time I see that thing, it reminds me to do something or to think something like I I'm a symbolic guy. Um, so some other thing, like uh, maybe you need to write a note and, and you uh, write a note to yourself, like, Hey, remember when you're doing this, you're blessing others as, as the wise men blessed Christ and as, as Christ blesses you. And just that simple little note and tape it on whatever you keep your wrapping paper in for the other 11 months of the year. Right. Um, so whatever that looks like for you, go for it. I, maybe don't get a tattoo of it. That might be a little extreme. Um, what's oh, that? Could you do that? Drop a picture in the notes that, or in the comments so that we can see it. Well, my, we might make fun <laughs> of you depending on how closely we know you, but <laughs> what's that tattoo mean uh it reminds me uh to think of of christmas gifts as blessing to others okay it wouldn't be the dumbest reason for a tattoo <laughs> i've ever heard side note yeah so yeah. some other things that i i just kind of thought of you could even like this is cheesy and i wouldn't do it but maybe you would not you, Ben. Well, you, I could see you doing this, Ben. Mostly. I love puns. So if this is anything that no, I can fun no, off of. it's I would never commit that crime on a recorded <laughs> podcast. Um, just like get Jesus-y wrapping paper with like mangers or crosses, on, which like you think is dumb. And like <laughs> if I got it, I'd be like, OK, this is kind of cheesy. But it, it does kind of remind you when you're over it, like. At very least, it reminds them, oh, this person giving me this gift is Christian. Maybe is a Jesus freak, depending on what they how they feel about it. Um, but I think maybe even better is make Christmas gifts about like surrounding someone's faith a priority. Mm -hmm. So say you're getting a gift for uh, for a kid. Get them a Bible, get them a devotional book. And the great thing about a lot of those devotional books is they're stupid cheap. So you can get them the gift they're going to enjoy and have fun with, but then also get them something to help support their faith and bless them in that way um, to kind of keep that focus on we give gifts to bless each other. And there is no greater blessing than helping someone grow in their faith. Um, so especially if like if you're someone's godparents, <laughs> whether or not you remember, that's kind of the agreement you made when you became a godparent is to help them grow in your faith. So that. Uh, that faith-inspired gift should probably be a priority. This is me giving, you know, baptismal sponsors a little bit of a, a nudge. Nudge, nudge. Yeah, yeah. Get after it. Okay, so that's gifts. So, What's next? So, so, Josh, no, 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 before we move on from gifts, does that mean we can't gag gift? 
I would not. So I have nothing against gag gifts. In fact, I have been known to organize secret Satans before. <clears throat> for those of you, for those of you who don't know, a secret Satan is much like a secret Santa, except for the gifts are a little diabolical. So, um, a good example of a secret Satan gift is you give someone a twenty in a bag of honey. So, if they want the twenty dollar bill, they have to reach through a bag of honey to get it. Um, Another strategy that's a little bit worse is you get them a really nicely framed photo of an ex-girlfriend. Um, so like, clearly I have no problem with gag gifts. I don't think, I wouldn't call it a celebration of Christmas though. That's fair. I mean, you could make the joke, you could say like, it is bringing joy into people's lives. Like I, if it's a good gag gift, if it's actually funny, I enjoy receiving those. And it does bring me joy. It does bless me in that way. But I think it's a little bit more of a stretch. So if I'm going to, like, if someone's asking me, what, what's your position on gag gifts? Go for it. But I wouldn't call it a celebration of Christmas. I would just say Christmas, the Christmas season gives you a good excuse to do something like that. Fair enough. So what's our next what's our next uh, tradition there, John? You just wanted to flip that on me, didn't you? Yeah, well, maybe. Punk. Um <laughs> I came up with gifts, so you gotta do the next one. Yeah, but then I stole gifts and I presented it as my own. <laughs> okay, so let's do uh, cookies. Because okay. I, I asked if we could do Christmas cookies. <clears throat> and I think the easiest answer to this, obviously obviously nothing about this is obvious because i have no idea where you're going you need to make an entire gingerbread nativity set obviously that's your obvious obviously thing. obviously that is the only answer <laughs> that's so dumb <laughs> hey at least you didn't say that we need to use christmas cookies for communion because we'd make it onto a blog site. <laughs> That might, yeah, that might be a little heretical. Oh, anyway, uh, in reality, I think like one of the the joys of of making Christmas cookies is that like it oftentimes happens in a family setting or as part of an exchange, like where you get to trade recipes with people, or if you've got one recipe that you think is really good and somebody else has one they really enjoy, you get to trade that and uh, kind of bring each other joy by offering each other different cookies and recipes and things. Um, and it, another big piece of that, I don't know about you, Josh, but I always feel like I end up eating more cookies than I need to at Christmas. Um, cookies are a big part of the way that my family celebrates Christmas. Uh, and, and also now my wife's family is the same way. Um, so like, there's always too many cookies in the house. Um, we could very easily uh, you know, give some of those cookies to people that aren't ourselves or our own uh, beer guts. Are you saying you want me to send you some cookies, Ben? No, because <laughs> no, I already have too many. Um, <laughs> as pastors, both Josh and I are are more prone than your average bear to just receive cookies out of the blue uh from kind old ladies and um if you are a kind old lady thank you but maybe not this year <laughs> that's not even what i'm saying i'm just saying feel free to spread the love elsewhere oh like, yeah yeah like you... i actually so i was i was at a christmas thing yesterday and i mentioned that like i'm trying to lose weight which i'm increasingly convinced i it's it's just not it's not possible. I'm at a calorie deficit of like 800 a day and I'm not, it's just there. Um, Keep on it, Josh, I got your back. But I was told <laughs> this isn't the season for that. This is, this is the season for maybe maintaining. And I'm like, oh. you're kind of right, but that's, mm, 
So um, you also live in Southern California. You you need zero insulation for winter is cold. Like it's kind of cold. It's fifty five degrees outside today. It's cold. Georgia boy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! At this point, it, it's I'm a it's a it's a SoCal thing because Georgia winter is about here all the time. But like I went out yesterday and I was like, it's cold. I why I was promised when I came here it was gonna be warm and perfect all the time, and today it's 55 degrees outside. Um, anyway, so I think we can redeem cookies by just being generous with our cookies, because. Uh, Christ was generous with his presence in our world, in our lives, and uh, with his grace and mercy. So we're, yeah. we're just going to throw that out there. Make some, some really enjoy, great... Enjoy your Christmas great. and share them. Share them yeah. with people. Um, people wonder why there's a like a systematic systemic problem with pastors being overweight. Side note. <laughs> A big part of it is people are like, I want to, I want to do something for pastor. I have an idea. I'm going to make him a dessert. Like, uh, in case you didn't know, there is a systemic problem with pastors being overweight and not in good health. Um, that's absolutely true. So, be part. Of any moving on, Christmas cookies. Okay, and well, and you'll notice that even if these these traditions are very loosely connected. Um, we're not saying don't do them like (laughs) unless your Christmas traditions involve something you really shouldn't be doing anyway like actually following Herod's footsteps and slaughtering the incense yeah don't do that Uh, that's a bad (laughs) tradition Um, like there's no harm in them and I think even in something like Christmas cookies even in something like gag gifts you can use it as a way to like i was saying earlier people get reminded of stuff in the weirdest ways sometimes so maybe your christmas cookies every year like some people when they when you have a certain smell it like brings you back to a certain time or a certain place um maybe christmas cookies remind you of the joy of christmas and it really is something that points you to christ so like if that is your thing if if one of these traditions has that emotional response for you that connects you to Christ, by all means, go for it. Um, so the next one uh, I think is a good one is decorating. And this is lights, this is trees, this is ornaments, this is weird Christmas stuff that people put all over their homes. Um, are you telling me that your house doesn't currently look like the inside of a, a, a TJ Maxx in, in mid-November? No, it does not. Okay. No, we uh, we are a a, a family of subtleties. Mm. So we have garland up, we have our tree up, um, and we have we have like Christmas candles out. So it's like it's Christmas is evident, but it doesn't punch you in the face when you walk in the door. So anyway, so decorations. Um, connection to the Christmas story, Ben, you got anything? I mean, I, I feel like the start of, of Christmas decoration. There's a few different ways we can go with this. One. We could talk like the pagan roots of Christmas trees. Um, we flip them the right way up so that they're not quite as pagan anymore. Uh, you know, that, or something like that. That's got to um, have been, at least in part, because it's easier to put a tree up the right way. <laughs> yeah, fairly difficult to nail one to the ceiling. Um, <laughs> just, just saying. My high school um, youth group, my, my junior and senior year, or no, maybe my senior year and then my freshman year of college, they had a small Christmas tree hanging from the ceiling for several years. It, in fact, it might actually still be there because Good. you had a bunch of high school guys decorating the youth space. And they were like, let's put a Christmas tree on the ceiling. And it really pissed someone off in the youth group. And my dad likes to push buttons. So they just left it up and he decorated it for all the seasons. 
So for Valentine's Day, the upside down Christmas tree had hearts on it. For St. Patrick's Day, it had little clothes. Like <laughs> beautiful. Not a pagan remembrance, but upside down Christmas tree nonetheless. Not as hard as you'd think to hang it from the ceiling. I also once saw a uh, YouTube channel of skateboarders uh, bungee uh, launch a Christmas tree through the roof of their building so that it was suspended upside down, so not intentionally. Um, this is a great video. You can look that up later. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, I think in terms of decoration, I think the the things that we can kind of look at are like, the church does some unique things in the way that we decorate for Christmas. You know, vestments change, colors change if you're in a more liturgically, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? In a more liturgical um, church? Yeah. This, yeah. If you're liturgically in church inclined that, was, I think, the phrase you were looking for. And yeah, or something along those lines. I, just like a church that generally is is more um, in in following with liturgical seasons and, and calendars and stuff, or even just like you know, uh, if you're in a, a no, I think a basically if the church. pastor wears a robe and a stole, <laughs> you probably notice that it, the color of the stole changes during the Christmas season. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, or even like <laughs> if you're in a really, really low church setting where you don't have your own space and like, yeah, uh, you know, maybe the background of the songs is changing from uh, like, I don't know, black or whatever you do during uh, normal parts of the year to now it's, you know, maybe a little bit more Christmassy. Um, if you'll notice, if you're, if you go to Edgewater, you'll notice that, so I wear a suit on Sundays um no tie don't look good in ties but i have a pocket square and my pocket square during the advent season has been blue guys devil's in the details uh, dude i got you liturgically appropriate hair bands for my man bud i have genuinely thought about looking into those do it do it i'm in need Join of me. new hair bands do it. <laughs> my, my wife found a bunch of her old ones and they were, you know, all the colors of the rainbow. And, uh, Christmas she pulled out all the <laughs> no, no, you don't need, I don't need any. I've already got some. Get some for Josh. I'm going to send you some better ones. <laughs> uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, like, you'll notice that things are changing because we want the church and we want the space to correspond to the things that we're celebrating and as we go through advent we're we're looking forward to the coming of christ we're looking forward to uh, the the things that come with the coming of christ um whether it's looking back at the people of israel and their expectation of messiah we're looking forward as christians and the things that are coming with christ when he returns um we're we're celebrating that there is a hope um and it, it is a very real thing. And, and our decorations around the church represent that, you know, uh, Christmas trees and, and garland and that kind of thing. Um, they were originally brought into homes to, to symbolize life in the midst of the darkest and coldest parts of the year. Um, and even when they became part of the Christian tradition, you can point back at that and, and, the, the green of your, your trees and your garland are, are a point to the life of Christ in the midst of a world that seems more dead than normal, at least if you live in the northern 80% of this country and actually experience the seasons. Um, so the, the connection I'm, I'm kind of hearing, I'm kind of making, <laughs> and what I want to focus in on for this is the Advent color. Um, in most churches now, some, I guess, still do purple. Unfortunately, the company that makes my stoles that I don't wear anyway um, still does purple. I can't find a blue stole that matches. Um, most churches, it's blue. You have blue on the altar. You have wherever you have like liturgical colors anywhere, you have blue. Pastors will wear blue stoles. Um, even, even us, we have a communion table and we have blue um, table runners on it. Um, 
altar, I guess would be the word I should use, but feels kind of weird calling a, a fold up table an altar. Um, but it, I, it, it's an altar, it's an altar. Um, so we have this blue. And if you say like, where's blue come from? It's Bible doesn't say anything about blue being a prominent color in Mary and Joseph's journey to Bethlehem, right? Um, the, the explanation I have heard is that it's blue because blue is like a hopeful color, which is a, a kind of arbitrary designation, right? But we've come to associate it in the church as this means Christmas is coming. And regardless of where it comes from, all of our decorations, the lights, the trees, the stupid tchotchke crap people put out, the not stupid tchotchke crap people put out, because some of it's kind of cool. Um, all of that stuff, regardless of where it comes from, regardless of its direct connection with Christmas story, at this point, you see that stuff, you drive through a neighborhood and you see lights up. You, you think it's Christmas time. It's getting close to Christmas time. So even though there's not a super direct connection with the original Christmas story, what I would, to point us to Christ is use it all as Advent reminders. When you have your decorations up, when you pull into your driveway and you see the lights on your house, um, if you figured out how to get a timer working, if you like, as you see decorations all over the place, let it just let it be what it is. And it's a reminder that Christmas is coming. And uh, let that be the reminder for what it is that we're, we're getting ready to celebrate Christ's birth into this world and, and everything that he promises to do with that. So that's the connection I heard in your, in your, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like, it, I I would say that a lot of the the like idea behind decorate. I can't say this for sure, but you you decorate a home in preparation for, you know, the birth of a child. You know, parents will get a bunch of gifts, and you know, family might go prepare the home to to receive the the kid, uh, and. In some ways, like but side note, the kid will not ever remember. No, they're absolutely not, not. They're not forming no. long term. This is this is for the parents. This is not for the kid. <laughs> but like, maybe include some something strong for the for the mom. You know, since so she can drink again. Yeah. Um. Maybe. Uh. <laughs> not necessarily going to encourage that. Um. I probably shouldn't have said that. Yeah, we'll have another episode on alcoholism. That'll be a ooh, good one. Ooh, that's a good um, one. Yeah, I'm adding that, on that to list. our list right now. Well, um, we'll just say alcohol instead of alcoholism. Like, yeah, because we've got enough isms on our list. Um, <laughs> anyway, and like we kind of do the same thing in, in our churches, in our homes, as we prepare and we wait for Christ. Like, we know that he's coming. We know that this infant child of God is coming. Uh, and so we jazz the place up and um, we count down the days. We count down the Sundays you know, using Advent calendars and wreaths um, until we celebrate the day where Christ has come. Um, and that's a, a really cool thing for us to do. And um, if you don't necessarily have... Um, decoration or things that help you with pointing back to this is a really cheesy way to say this but the reason for the season consider getting some um if you want to get a simple advent wreath great or um maybe my a different one advent wreaths are stupid expensive you can make your own you can go go get three blue candles and a pink one and a white one for the middle you're done. And a five dollar wreath from the thrift store. You've made your own advent wreath. Um, or my my wife's uh, or my in-laws like to send my wife and I uh, those uh, advent uh, scratch off tickets. Uh, they're like advent wreaths or not advent wreaths, advent calendars, but they're scratch off tickets. Uh, so you can count down the days to the birth of Christ to see if you want to write the tribe. <laughs> Did not know uh, those existed. <laughs> uh, next time you go to the gas station, just take a peek. Um, <laughs> I might have to get one of those. 
<laughs> uh, anyway, um, and they're kind of fun because you never know, you might actually win something. Um, <laughs> but like, <clears throat> you can do something kind of silly and fun and, and, and decorate in a way that reminds you of, of what we're decorating for and what we're celebrating. Um, and, and enjoy it along the way. Um, something that, uh, I got one more like serious thing and then I want to jump into All right. um, <clears throat> kind Wrapping of this up. thing. Yeah. Um, you say Jesus is the reason for the season, right? I was actually, uh, we got devotionals from Concordia Publishing House for, um, for Advent for the church. They're, they were like, two dollar little their devotional books they start on december 1st and they go through um and they had one that talked about this jesus is the reason for the season and they said they, they pushed back on that a little bit and i actually think it's for really good um like the the thought behind it is really cool not that i have a problem with saying jesus is the reason for the season but they're like jesus didn't come for himself like the, he didn't need the angels to announce him to the shepherds. He didn't have to be born as an, like none of this was out of, uh, he didn't come for him. He came for us. He came for you and he came for me. So the reason for the season is his love for us. His, the reason for the season is to save us from our, ourselves, um, which is more cumbersome and doesn't roll off the tongue as well. Uh, but I think it's it's really cool to think about that the Christmas season is ultimately it is for us. Jesus came for us, and I I, I thought that was a really cool uh, observation, I guess. So, um, so other than or maybe it maybe it is Christmas cookies for you. But what what is your favorite Christmas tradition, Ben? Mm, thought you'd never ask uh christmas dinner christmas, um, what do you do for christmas dinner my family has made a giant roast for the last it's got to be going on 10 plus years at this point where it is just a giant slab of beef uh cooks for hours comes out a perfect medium rare and oh, hot dang that thing has gone fast um just the entire spread i'm salivating thinking about it uh and i convinced my family this normally we would we would have christmas dinner on christmas eve uh just because of where family lives and, and what the timing of things is and i convinced them to wait till Christmas Day so that I could get there this year. And I could not be more excited. <laughs> How about you, Josh? What's your uh, what's your favorite Christmas tradition? So it's it might be Christmas Eve dinner. It's the tradition that um my wife and I started the first year we were married on Vicarage. Because like I haven't since Vicarage, I have not been home for Christmas mm -hmm. or even the like. Um, so we decided on Christmas Eve. We do pizza, we do Domino's pizza. And that's our and on Vicarage, part of it was because we had four services on Christmas Eve, so I was at church from like two in the afternoon until like 10 30 at night so in between the services we ordered a bunch of domino's pizza and we um and the other pastors the other like the music everyone who was like working that night we said we got enough pizza if you want it come have some um so that i i think is a really cool tradition but i want a side note um we we do butcher box which is like we should be sponsored this is a this is a plug kind of we're not sponsored by butcher box though um but they they do like a subscription meat program which we love and it's like it's not the cheapest meat you can find right you can go to sam's club and you can get your stuff cheaper but 
it is for the quality and for the fact that I don't have to spend 20 minutes cutting fat off of chicken, it's worth it. So we, we have adjusted our box for our Christmas order. And our Christmas meal this week is going to be a 1.25 pound tri-tip. And I'm excited. Atta boy. So, uh, so either it's the, the we do Domino's pizza on Christmas Eve or um, on Christmas Day, we went on Vicarage. Chris and I, on our way home from church, we stopped by and I did a hospital visit because we had a member, uh, a, a respected and influential member in the con con yeah, congregation. Um, and she was going through, I think she had a stroke. She had like a heart attack and a stroke. I don't remember what order they, so she was in the hospital recovery and she wasn't able to go to Christmas service. So we went and we just, we stopped by, we brought her a bulletin um, just to visit with her for a couple minutes. And this little old lady, she looked and she's like, do you guys have friends where it's like cold and snowy today? And we said, yeah, yeah, we know people up north because we were in Boca Raton, Florida at the time. And she said, go to the beach today and take pictures and send them to all your friends in the, in the great white north. <laughs> And we did, and it was great. And because we I remember received, getting some of those pictures, <laughs> we received a call to another very warm weather climate. Um, that might that might be a fun tradition to continue. What do you do on Christmas? Oh, oh, we send pictures of ourselves enjoying the warmth to our uh, less <laughs> fortunate friends. So, um, all right. So, what's your uh, takeaway for today, Ben Benjamin? Other than I'm uh, a terrible friend. I think my, my takeaway for today is probably uh, instead of teaching your kids about Santa Claus, teach them to punch a heretic. Um, <laughs> You're going to get phone calls about that, Ben. <laughs> no, I think it, realistically, I think the takeaway is like whatever the 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 tradition is, that's an important piece of your your Christmas experience. Um, see what you can do to tie it back to Christ and His coming, um, and the way that that has like immediately touched you as uh, either as a, a Christian or as if you are a non Christian listening to this podcast, um, knowing that our, our belief is. God walked amongst man and that he was born a human, born as a, a, a boy um, to live among us, to walk among us, to love us uh, among us. Um, and that our tradition should point back to that. Unaffiliated and, to the game, by the way. Yes. Also not a sponsor yet. I don't want that sponsorship. <laughs> All right, Josh, what's your takeaway? Well, that was going to be my takeaway. So thanks, Ben. We could have the same one. I mean, we could, that but good I, I, feel like, I feel like our, our <laughs> that's robbing the people who spend their time to listen to us go on for 40 minutes. Um, it's been like an hour. <laughs> yeah. It's bonus content. So congratulations. So, uh, <laughs> I think my takeaway would be like, guys, make church a priority on Christmas. And I, you might say, well, that's just because you're a pastor and well, like, no, this is, it's something we should do. So in like, enjoy your celebrations. Like I said, as long as there's not like a moral problem with them in the first place, go for it. I'm not against any of that. Um, but church on christmas eve and if if maybe not this year but if it's offered on christmas day make it a priority for your family celebration for your celebration wherever that is whatever that looks like um because it is it's an important part of what we're doing so um prayer ideas for the day 
give give thanks to God that he does give us this time to celebrate, to be with family. And, and it's just give thanks that it's, it's reached this point where it is almost unilateral that you have time that you can take with family this time of year, um, that you can hopefully relax and recharge a little bit. Um, and so that's your give thanks, pray to God that he would he would help remind you of his grace in all of the different things that we celebrate on Christmas, that he would keep that aspect of our faith always in the front of your mind. Um, and that's kind of the, the prayer ideas I have for you today. So we have for you today. With that, brothers and sisters, go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.